All right guys, so here's the review of the Sega Design X Series Gorilla. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I've checked out quite a few Sega Design watches now, and they're always interesting, they're never boring, that's for sure. Obviously they're a little bit divisive, some people don't like them, but you're probably going to want to see it. Don't know whether you'll want to buy it, but as I say, you're definitely going to want to check it out, because there's always some interesting touches with each one, and this one is no exception. So I've been trying it out for a while, full disclosure, I was sent the watch for free, don't have to send it back you know the score, it's not going to change the way I do my reviews, going to keep it 100% honest all the time, no matter what. Interestingly enough, this one is actually from Amazon, not from AliExpress this time, so link will be down in the description to the Amazon store, and that's the Amazon.com store, where you can pick it up. But enough waffling, let's jump right in, show you what it's all about. So here's the packaging you'll get it in, the usual quality Seeker Design packaging, with an embossed picture of the watch, and then the Seeker Design at the top. It's like a little book, just slides out, and then we've got a picture of it there again as well. And then the Sega Design Mechanical X Series Grey Tape. And it comes in this nice display setup. So you've got two different straps there as well. And then you've got a bit of information with the specs, but we'll go over that in a minute. So we'll get all this out and then we'll show you the watch. So here is the actual watch. And then you can see I've got the black and orange version. They have a few different others if you don't like this one. So they also do a purple and black one. They do a silver and red. And then they do a couple of titanium ones as well. So they do a blue titanium one and a gold titanium one. With the gold one, that's actually got 18 karat gold, which is only electroplated, but it's got 18 karat gold in it. So that one is a bit more expensive. Quickly talk about the specs. So when it comes to the dimensions on this, 45.5 across the width, 11.8mm thick, we've got 22mm lug width, and then the all important lug to lug is 48.2. So a nice compact lug to lug despite that pretty sizable width, but obviously with it being square, it's not like your usual kind of dimensions. And again, because it is square, that might put some people off straight away, but for me, I quite like it, something a bit different. So let's go to zoom in on that dial, what there is of it. So obviously it's a skeletonized watch. So we've got that interesting X kind of framework, which is where it gets its name, obviously. And then when it comes to the hands, this is part of the reason I went with this black version. So I think they stand out a bit better, those silver hands against the black. On some of the other versions, like the non-coated stainless steel ones and the titanium ones, I think they blended in a bit more because it was all kind of silver. So that was why I opted for this one. And then we've got that matching orange hand and details on the side. And again, with it being the gorilla, we've got that gorilla on the side there. And that's because this is a pretty tough watch. You can see it's got quite a lot of space around it to protect that movement. It's also got something really interesting. when it comes to the unique selling point, and that's this suspension. It's actually got independent suspension on each corner, which is not something I've seen before on a watch. So you've got quite a bit of movement there, so it should be able to absorb quite a few impacts. Let me know, have you ever seen anything like that on a watch before? Because as I say, not something I've seen before. You probably saw around the side there as well. But some nice little screw details, that's signed brown, push-pull crown, but again, nice detailing on it. So seeing as we're talking about this, show you in action. So pop it out, it's got the one position, and you can see we've got hacking as well, which is a little unusual for this kind of watch, because obviously it's not the easiest to set the time. And then we've got hand winding, and obviously with it being a skeletonized movement you can see all that working does look really good i'll probably chuck in some macro so you can see it a bit better 
show it off. So when it comes to that movement, it's the CD01, which apparently is Sega Design's own movement. Not sure if it's modified from something else, couldn't really find any information. But as I say, it's got hacking, got a 40 hour power reserve, 21,600 beat rate. Pretty nice specs. Quickly show you the back of it as well, because that's quite nice too. Skeletonized rotor there as well, which is signed with the Seeker design and what the movement name is as well. It's all really nicely done. When it comes to the strap, you've got this silicon strap, which is got a nice design to it again, kind of matching the case, and obviously really breathable with all those holes. No taper on it, but we do have quick release. So you can swap it out with that other strap easily enough. And the other strap is a two-piece nylon one. Again, with quick release, nice hardware on it. Got the Sega Design branding on there as well. I've not really worn it on this because I'm really liking the silicon one. But I'll show you what it's like on this later on. So now let's show you what the loom's like on this. So you can see we've got a bit there already, but let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And this is another thing that is interesting with this watch. It's not just your normal kind of loom profile, something a little bit different, as you come to expect with Seeger Design. And again, they don't disappoint in terms of something a little bit different. So again, we've got that X pattern, mirroring the name of the watch, the X series. And again, pretty unique. You can also see we've got some loom on the hands, on the tips. Not a great deal there, but it's usable. Definitely not the best, but again, with the skeletonized watch, you're not expecting a great deal in terms of loom, really. But for what it is, it's, it's decent. So you probably noticed we've got a little bit of AR coating on this crystal, but more importantly, is it sapphire? Let's check it out. Using the trusty diamond selector too. And yep, we have got sapphire crystal. Let's quickly test the back. And on the back, we've only got mineral. So a little disappointing, considering it's supposed to be a rugged watch, but again, it's gonna be on your wrist. So probably not too big an issue. Something that may be though, something you might not expect, is the water resistance on this. It's only 30 meters, which again, for a rugged kind of watch, is a little disappointing. So it's not gonna be one that you wanna get wet, but It'll be fine for knocks and everything with our suspension. But again, slightly odd choice for a rugged kind of watch where you've got all the suspension and a pretty hefty case, but you can't really get it wet. All that's left to do now is show you what it's like on wrist and then we'll wrap this up. So this is what it looks like on my seven inch wrist. And as I said, with that compact lug to lug, it does wear nicely despite it being a square watch. Obviously it is pretty wide, but that lug to lug helps so if anything it's slightly wider than it is long which might again put some people off but for this kind of watch you want something a little bit odd a little bit unusual so i think this works and again really nice strap really breathable with all those holes so if you're wearing it during the summer not a problem but what do you think are you into this kind of watch do you like skeletonized watches do you like square watches and if you do, which colour would you be going for? Would I recommend this watch? Yeah, I think I would. If you want something a bit different, if you want a skeletonized watch, I'd recommend the stainless steel ones. I think the titanium ones are a little pricey. So I'd probably be choosing the stainless steel, as I said. But for what it is, it's not too bad. And you can see it's pretty legible with this option. Not the most legible. But for a skeletonized watch, not too bad. So I'll quickly show you what it's like on the other strap. So this is what it looks like on that two-piece canvas strap. So again, it does wear well, but I've not been wearing it on this really, because I just think the other one suits the watch a bit better. But it is nice that they give you another option out of the box. But let me know, which one do you think looks better? This canvas one or the silicon one? But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.